you could say these are the people who helped build Berlin, New Hampshire. People who came here for pulp and paper. If the mill wasn't here, Berlin would never have been a city. They were here because we had water power and we had woods all around us and we brought people in to work in the mills. If you drive through nowadays, you might not see Berlin's long paper mill history. About a hundred years ago, though, the famous Brown Company employed thousands here, becoming one of the largest paper producers in the country. And much of life around the mill was captured by company photographers. Those photos are now part of a collection at Plymouth State University. In the 1850s, Berlin was home to a large wood mill. By the 1860s, William Wentworth Brown and his family took over the mill and renamed it the Berlin Mills Company, which began to focus on paper, which required lots of logging. They had as many as 50 camps out in the woods on their lands, and they employed 6,000 men to work in the forest, to cut the trees down. When I first went in the woods, we didn't have electricity. I lied in the lamps. You know what those are? Kerosene. Bill Thomas worked decades in the logging camps in the woods of Maine and New Hampshire. It was hard physical work, often in sub-zero temps. You wore good boots, good stockings, long johns, and the wool pants, layers, turtleneck, you had no problem. Even though logging camps were remote, life was civilized, including heated bunkhouses, fully stocked stores, and staffed kitchens. Breakfast was six in the morning, lunch was 12 o'clock at noon, and supper was at six at night. You weren't supposed to have beer in the camps. You weren't supposed to have any booze in the camps, whether it was beer or liquor. So you had to be careful. You know, the boss, the boss would fire you, but I don't, I don't know anybody ever got fired. <laughs> <laughs> Once that pulp wood was cut and ready to move, it was loaded into streams and rivers. The company used the river to move the wood and to store it. And so there were times when for 30 miles you could not see water. It was just wood. It could take a piece of pulp wood, sometimes two or three years, to make it downriver to Berlin, riding the water flow. It was known as the River Drive. It was quite a, quite a sight. See, uh, it's from one, hand, one side to the other side. It was all full of logs completely. There were people who were quick enough, you know, river drivers, who could run across four foot pulp. There were people they'd say could spin a piece of pulp wood like a wheel and go across a piece, you know, an area of water. Loggers would often have to free up log jams using tools. And in some cases, if it was too big, they lit a stick of dynamite. Once the logs finished their river journey in Berlin, they were pulled into the mill to be processed into paper, which let off a rather infamous smell. Can you describe that smell for me? <laughs> yeah, well, they used to call it the smell of rotten eggs. It was sulfur dioxide. And uh, pe people who visited Berlin would complain about it. And most of the people who worked in the mill call it the smell of money. Was it large machineries? Was it hot in there? Was it, uh, can you describe it? Well, in the winter time, you freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Raymond Daigle worked in the wood room. We had to look for oversized logs. If oversized logs would go in a chute, we will plug it up, then we had to pull it out. The pulp was turned into various paper products, like newspaper, map paper, and paper towels. The trifold paper towels were invented in broad. Paper towels you pull out of the, the thing that were folded were, were invented here. 
Research was an important part of the Brown Company. They held dozens of patents on machinery and related products. They made a drainage sewer pipe uh, for 70 years that was made out of paper and tar. Huh. It, was, it was called Bermacle Pipe. The Brown family was considered royalty in Berlin, and their company was part of everyday life outside the paper mill too, which included support for schools, a men's and women's basketball team, a hockey team, a store, and fun family activities. We had all kinds of different nationalities that came to make a living here. The Canadian, the Russians, the uh, Polish, the Swedish, uh, the Finnish, and all of them, they all came here to make a living. After changing ownership and years of decline, the mill in Berlin closed in 2006. About a year later, the final remnants were destroyed. And it was raining that day. And my opinion was, there were tears of the old timers that passed to see the place uh, disappearing. Nowadays, Berlin is still seeing the future in trees. The old mill was replaced with a biomass power plant that burns wood chips. And tourism to the nearby forest trails is growing. The Historical Society just hopes Berlin remembers its tree roots run deep. So we're trying to preserve that history here and try not to let people forget where they came from. <laughs>